I want you to imagine you are sitting in a rocking chair on your front porch on an overcast spring day. A short rain shower has left the air feeling clean. As you breathe it in, you hear low thundering in the distance. Suddenly, something bright catches your eye in the middle of the lawn. About three feet off the ground, slowly floating towards you, is a blue glowing orb the size of a volleyball. You hold your breath as it eerily drifts closer until it softly lands on the deck. Then, in a blinding flash of white and blue, the orb has completely disappeared, leaving behind a large burnt streak on the wooden boards, along with a strong scent of sulfur. As crazy as this story may sound, this is something that actually happens. This rare phenomenon is known today as ball lightning. Stories about ball lightning have been told throughout history, but only recently have scientists had enough evidence to accept it as a possible natural event. In fact, some have been fortunate enough to catch these strange occurrences on camera. So what is the origin of these dangerous glowing orbs? And is ball lightning truly a part of the natural world? Or is there something more uncanny behind these mysterious sightings? Could these balls of light be similar to a door being cracked open, giving us a glimpse of another realm? Could the people who witnessed this strange occurrence actually be seeing into the supernatural world? Researchers believe the earliest record of ball lightning is found in the monastery records written by a monk named Gervais way back in 1195 AD. Gervais's writings described what he referred to as a marvelous sign he claimed that a dense and dark cloud, which produced a white spherical shape, sent this fiery globe down toward a nearby river. What sort of conclusion would a medieval monk jump to while seeing a ball of fire suddenly appear in the sky? If you were in his monk sandals, would you think that it was just a byproduct of a storm cloud? Or would you view it as a sign from heaven? Here are just a few more stories throughout history. In the 1500s, a child named Nicholas Walsh, who later served as a member of parliament, witnessed a fiery sulfurous globe entering the dining room. In the early 1800s, a large warship called the HMS Warren Hastings was caught in a violent storm. The crew scattered on deck to control the ship and keep her from tipping into torrential waves. And suddenly, in the midst of the storm, what was described as balls of fire began explosively hailing down onto the ship. Fire started to spread, and several crew members were hit and killed. Nicholas II, the last Tsar of Russia, recounted seeing a ball of lightning as a child. He was in a church service with his family when a storm rolled in. He was frightened when the candles were extinguished by the wind, and suddenly a ball of fire flew in through a window. In the early 1900s, a man named Alistair Crowley claimed he was calmly sitting in a cottage in New Hampshire when a dazzling globe of electric fire came through the wall of the cabin. Now, with any other normal British fellow, this story would be extraordinary. But Alistair Crowley was a known occultist. Ball lightning would not be far from the seemingly paranormal activities in his lifestyle as a magician and occultic novelist. In fact, the man even claimed to be the Antichrist. Could Crowley's story be true, or was this just a ruse to make people believe in his supernatural abilities? But if the story was true, could it be evidence that when we see ball lightning, we are actually witnessing an overlap between the natural and spiritual worlds? The physicist Tesla claimed to have recreated lightning balls artificially in his lab, where he displayed them to audiences. But even these were different in size from many of the legends, and much of Tesla's work was lost or destroyed. Could it be that he solved the mystery long before our modern day scientists? Or did Tesla create something entirely different? Today, accounts of people witnessing ball lightning are generally assumed to be true. Now, some people have faked videos of ball lightning using CGI, similar to the artistic recreations used in this video. However, some of the footage, like this particular video here, are believed by many experts to be real sightings. Researchers say that approximately 5% of the Earth's population claim to have actually seen ball lightning. This is about the same number of people that have been close enough to a lightning strike to witness its impact. 
Balls of lightning, or fire, are not the only mysterious phenomena out there. Aurora Borealis was a complete wonder at one point in history, and ancient cultures believed it to be a sign of the gods. Now we understand the awe-striking event is caused by the Earth's magnetic field and energized particles near the poles. Another rarely sighted event is known as sprite lights, or red sprites. This form of electrical discharge got its name because it looks like magical fairy-like figures dancing in the sky. Since the first sighting, many people have thought that these figures were actually fairies, or aliens, or angels, or perhaps the spirits of the stars descending upon the Earth. The electrical discharge which may be the most similar to ball lightning is St. Elmo's fire. This has been described as a plasma-like fire that comes in different colors and seems to float in the air. Sightings of St. Elmo's fire date far back in history, and this mystery fire has been mentioned in famous literature, including Shakespeare's The Tempest and Jules Verne's Journey to the Center of the Earth. Regions all over the world have stories of mysterious lights, like the Marfa lights in Texas, the Min Min lights in Australia, or the folklore Will-o'-the-Wisps of Irish Moors. Many cultures throughout history have stories of ghost lights that are sometimes not fully explained by natural causes. Is it possible that some of these lights are actually spiritual beings, such as angels or demons, revealing themselves in the natural world? It makes sense that people would ask these questions, because with how advanced science is today, it can come as a shock that not everything can be simply explained. Such is the mystery surrounding ball lightning. We know little more of this alleged weather phenomenon now than we did hundreds of years ago. What may sound even stranger to you is this. Even quote unquote normal lightning strikes are not fully understood. We understand why the electrical charges discharge in the way they do, but we are still not sure of where the energy comes from in the first place. Some believe it is collected from within the atmosphere and the earth. Others theorize quantum particles traveling for millions of light years enter the atmosphere and charge the air. Wherever the energy is actually coming from, lightning is certainly one of the most dramatic displays of power on Earth. No wonder people in ancient civilizations thought that lightning was a sign of the gods. So what theories for ball lightning have been proposed? One theory to explain ball lightning is the idea of gas and electrons activating to form a sort of plasma bubble. Another theory is that an electrical charge gets caught up in a magnetic field and spins, creating what looks like a spherical shape. Many scientists agree that microwaves have at least something to do with it. This leads us to the most substantial theory for ball lightning. Lightning is not limited to thunderstorms. Basically, lightning is an electrical discharge between two charged regions. And that discharge can also happen in dust storms, fires, and even during volcanic activity. It is theorized that ball lightning might have to do with tiny dust particles getting caught up in the electrical discharge. Some of the best evidences for this are the accidental findings of a group of scientists in China in 2012. They were studying a thunderstorm when a lightning ball appeared, and according to their instruments, its chemical makeup had strong indications of dirt. Maybe dirt or dust was the element missing to understand the source of ball lightning. It would explain the sulfuric scent described by many witnesses, although not all experts agree, and the mystery is not fully solved. BBC Weather's Susan Powell once said about ball lightning, Despite our advances, we stand as mystified as observers in the 12th century. So is ball lightning simply electrical discharges passing between dust floating in the air? Or is there a stranger, more spiritual explanation? Now, I'm about to shift gears and talk about something that actually is more spiritual. So you can choose to keep watching if you'd like. Either way though, I hope you'll subscribe and come back for more. Many people believe that science is the ultimate explanation for the mysteries of the universe. But the scientific pursuit can sometimes raise as many questions as it answers. Louis Pasteur is credited with saying, the more I study nature, the more I stand amazed at the work of the Creator. Science brings men nearer to God. Have you ever had an experience that you just can't seem to explain, no matter how hard you try? Perhaps it was a dream that came true, or maybe a moment where you experienced an unnatural presence, or possibly 
you've seen ball lightning or something like it for yourself. Oftentimes, we chalk these experiences up to coincidence or chance, but what if there is another explanation? What if the spiritual was crossing over into the natural? I believe that God reaches out to every person in different ways, but he's not reaching out as a part of an aimless cosmic game. Instead, I believe that he understands us better than anyone, and he uses life and its circumstances to ask us this simple question. Do you want to know me? The laws of science are built upon a series of theories, experiments, and conclusions. But what if the natural laws are not adequate to explain everything that exists? What if the natural and spiritual exist at the same time, bound by two separate sets of laws? Science itself would tell us not to reject God unless we can prove that he's not there. The only reason that we would completely reject the idea of God without conclusive evidence is because we just don't want him to be there. One of the greatest mysteries in the world is this question, why are we here? With God in the picture, the answer is simple, because he wanted us here. I'm here to tell you, he is real and he's worth knowing. He created you for a reason. He knew you before you were even born and he loves you. Some people might say, I can't accept the idea of God because of the standard of right and wrong that has been propagated so heavily by religions. It is true that God has a righteous standard. As God, he does get to decide what is right and what is wrong. However, 1 John 4, 8 tells us this, the one who does not love does not know God because God is love. So if God has a holy standard and he is also the ultimate expression of love, how do those two aspects of God reconcile? The next verse reveals this. By this, the love of God was revealed in us that God has sent his only son into the world so that we may live through him. Through Jesus Christ, God stepped out of his spiritual existence and into the natural world so that he could express his love to humanity. It says, so that we may live through him. What is the end of natural life? It's death. But even after we die in the natural world, God has offered us life in the spiritual Jesus, the Son of God, made this eternal life available through his sacrifice on the cross. The Bible tells us that one day this world is coming to an end and Jesus is coming back. Will you be ready for that day? Jesus describes this day in Matthew 24, 27, saying, For just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes as far as the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be.